Hi there, this is Johnny Miller from Point Blank Online Music School. Back once more to show you some cool stuff with uh, Ableton Live 8 and sounds and samples from clickproduce.com. Uh, today we're going to get tribal and going to look at this really cool library of sounds from Peace Love Productions called Tribal House. Uh, it just contains two folders, uh, one folder which just contains small one shots, just little single sounds that you might want to use to add to your beats, add the final little touches to your beats. Um, and then one folder of 130 BPM sounds, bass sounds, beats, uh, combinations, uh, pianos, percussion, organ lines, the lot. So it's a huge library. You can make a whole track out of just these sounds in this one library. Um, so what I've done, I've gone through here and picked out a couple of uh, little examples of percussion um, percussion samples, percussion loops. And I'm going to use a technique known as side chaining to ensure that these percussion loops all fit together really nicely when they play at the same time. So I've loaded these into session view. Let's have a look at them. This is what I've got in session view here. I've got three different loops here. The first loop, just a deep, simple drum loop. The second loop is a little bit busier. Got kind of congas and bongos in there. Some shakers too. It's, it's like a multi-layered percussion loop. And then lastly, I've just got a beat. So putting these three together, if I played them all together, if I just fire off scene number one, which plays all three clips at the same time. It all sounds good at the moment, but what I'm going to do is show you a technique called side chaining, which is going to essentially get these two, the first two loops, to work a little bit more closely together. Side chain compression is widely used in music production these days, essentially to ensure that two different elements of a track that might share very similar frequency content don't fight for space together when they play at the same time. And most commonly, it's bass lines and bass drums. So every time a bass drum plays, a sidechain compressor on a bass line will duck the level of the bass line, giving the bass drum room to move. Now I'm going to use that technique, but instead of using a compressor, I'm going to use a filter to ensure that when these low frequency hits on percussion loop number one play, on percussion loop two, certain sounds are filtered out to give those low frequency sounds room from audio track number one, from percussion loop number one. So I'm going to set up an auto filter device onto audio track number two. And this auto filter device, and it's similar to, uh, to a lot of DJ mixers, has low pass and high pass filters. Um, high pass filter and low pass filter do what they say on the tin really. They allow low frequencies to pass on a low pass filter and on a high pass filter we allow high frequencies to pass and we filter out low frequency. So every time the low frequency sounds from loop number one play, the high pass filter is going to kick in and filter out sounds from audio loop number two. Now to set this up I'm going to open up the side chain, which is on auto filter, activate it, and take the audio from audio track number one, which is my first loop. I'm going to turn up the envelope, and this allows me just to shape the performance of the filter a little bit better using these two controls, attack and release. And if I just play both loops now, you can start to hear the side chain action working on percussion loop number two. If I just mute loop number one, you can hear the high pass filter kicking in on loop number two. Every time these notes play on track number one, if I just shape the filter a little bit, I can make the effect a bit more obvious. So you can really hear it there. Loop number one is really affecting the performance of loop number two, thanks to the sidechain filter. If I turn the filter off, that's them both playing together with no sidechaining. Switch the sidechain on. And just by shaping this a little bit, I can get the effect a little bit more subtle and really gel these two percussion parts together. Let's add the beat now. So 
there's much more space now. Again, if I compare, turn the filter off. There's just not enough room for all those sounds. With the sidechain auto filter, the two percussion parts are working really nicely together now. Okay, so that's sidechain filtering in action. You can learn more cool tricks like this from pointblankonline.net. And uh, I'll see you again next week with another little trick, another little technique using Ableton Live and sounds from clickproduce.com. Thank <laughs> you.